Hey, I'm Neil, the boss. We sell used cars. We got a ton of employees. There's Jimmy, Hardy, Sammy, Ezra, and a ton of problems. I'm sick and tired of putting cars away. I think you're lacking. You gotta back me up. It's difficult making sense to some people. Every day is different. This is reality. This is me. This is my life. This is the people I work with. These are the customers, and these are everyday situations. Let's go sell cars then. Let's go. Whatever happens, we deal with it. I'm Neil, I'm the owner. I started this place uh, 10 years ago almost, uh, with 20 cars and a uh, single employee. We're an independent used car store in, uh, in Toronto. We sell used cars, we buy them from auctions, uh, trade-ins, lease returns. Life is a stage and I own mine. I mean, every time there's a customer, it is a show in, in, in one way or another. The company's motto is that hey, everybody drives and everybody's satisfied. We're delivering a car to Ottawa. It's my priest in a temple, so he wants a car and I gotta deliver it to his door because he doesn't want to come to Toronto to pick it up. The car was for my priest, a uh, priest from the temple. He called me up and I've sold him the last two vans that he's driving. So he called me up and says, oh my van, uh, I think was written off in an accident and he wanted uh, another van. What do we have here? No, we're one o'clock here. This vehicle is supposed to be delivered in Ottawa vehicle's not in my name yet, let alone licensed. So the car needs to be e-tested, I need plates on the vehicle and get this car out of here yesterday. Ezra is a very important guy in my life. Um, you know, every chief executive officer has, uh, uh, what do you call them, the executive secretaries. Uh, Ezra, I, I think I can count on. Ezra? Yes. Is it going to be ready? What? Um, Caravan? Yeah. Yeah? Come on, buddy. All right, man. Hardy is our top salesman at the moment. Ever since Hardy's come, Hardy puts the effort in. Hardy is very personable. Uh, problem with Hardy is he overpromises and then doesn't deliver. Hardy's a slippery salesman, you know, in, in my personal opinion. I call Hardy slippery, you know, slippery sink. All righty. So we'll be done tomorrow. We'll, tomorrow we can drop it to. Jim Nicolakakos, I'm the sales manager of the Toronto Auto Group. Probably the most easygoing person you'll ever want to work with. The reason I called you guys, housekeeping. A little bit of housekeeping, which I'm sick and tired of doing. You, this was, a, what happened yesterday? Yesterday was a clusterfuck, wasn't it? The whole fucking day, wasn't it? And when you guys are presenting an offer, let's try, okay? You know what? Fuck you. Call me back, it's important. ASAP. Okay. As you can tell, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, I'm, I'm very physically active. I'm probably in the gym minimal five to four times a week. Yeah. I'm attracting, I'm 43 years old and I'm attracting women in their 20s, in their 25. I was young at the time and um, I was approached to, to do some uh, underwear modeling. Yeah. My personal opinion, I think Jim's a great guy. I, I think he's got a good heart. I think he's a family man. He's uh, you know, he's middle-aged like myself. He's got two boys. I, I, th I think, personally, think he's a very good person. Hello. How you doing? Yeah, that was the ex-wife. Well, you know, she's got the kids. She stayed at home for 14 years. I was a career guy. She didn't pursue her career. Separation, divorce is tough, man. So, I think she's regretting her decision. She wanted this more than I did, the separation, right? Mm -hmm. So she's showing up at work. She calls me more. You know, she drops by my place once in a while. No, it doesn't affect me. I'd be lying if I said in some aspect and it doesn't, but it does. But it affects, you know, picking up the kids on, on hours that I should be here and stuff. But, uh, but uh, it's all good, all good. 
Arnold the mechanic is a person, I mean, Arnold came out of a franchise. He's a fully trained mechanic. He's a licensed guy. Arnold uh, is going through some personal stress. Between work and my ex, I get nothing but migraines. And I think he brings his stress to work. You know, he's, he seems to carry his uh, personal problems into work. <laughs> this one here, bro? Uh, He's got a peel. That's John, that's the service manager. It, when he was a tech, he was cool, and then he became a boss, and then I had problems with him. Well, now John's not bad. But if, if you rush anything, which I've done a few times, then you end up screwing something up, and the car will come back. We've got a situation with Arnold Are you aware of it? Critical safety issues regarding vehicles and customers driving vehicles. I wouldn't sell that car. This is my ex-wife's mother. Oh, don't say that. It's terrible. I'm his mom, I, and I love him dearly. Right, Jim? It's my mom. Yeah. Yes, my mom. Honestly, my, my ex and I still, we, we get along great. I mean, it's unfortunate, but who knows what... You never say never, but... Do you know what? I probably see more of Jim than I do my daughter. I see her pretty much almost once a week. Once a week, twice a week. Uh, yeah, actually, she's been in the market for three months, and uh, she comes, looks, and doesn't always finalize. Me and Neil have a $20 bet that she won't buy on Monday, so I think she will. Neil thinks she won't, so. Okay, I said to the boys, come and help me pick up. Do you want me to pull it out of the showroom if you take it for a drive? Is that hard to do? No, no problem. Let me do that. Okay. Are you coming with me, Jim? No, Mom. Take your time. Oh, wait on your bike. I met Jim when he was about um, 17. No, I guess he was 18. He was always, always a, a great kid. Really, always anxious to please. I could call Jim for anything. I remember when we went shopping one time, and he, me, he left me and Ryan looking at kids' clothes. And then he went off to another store and he forgot about us and drove home. Oh my god! Are you serious? And then we had to use a payphone to call him. <laughs> See, now that's something your dad didn't tell me. I think that's funny, but it would be scary. She loves me. My wife still loves me too, but that's it. The rest is easy. So you'll love me. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, my kids have always, since they were young, I've been in the car business, so I've always been around cars. My kids are actually fascinated with the car industry, so I didn't know all of them were going to be here, but usually my mother-in-law comes in every Friday and Saturday she spends the day with the kids and that. Just go look at the jeans. There's a nice pair of jeans for me in size 30. So, like, Just oh, go look at them for so me. They're so Oh. They're boot cut. They're cello. Go tell me if you like them. They're not boot cut. They're, they're cello. American Eagle. No, they're nice yeah. jeans. They have different kinds. I'm not, I'm not going. You're gay. They can go. In. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, love you. I'll see you guys later. A vehicle that I was um, supposed to take care of, if it was for a family friend of Neil's. My priest bought a car, sight unseen, on the phone. Apparently last night at about 10 o'clock, I, I got a text message from Neil saying, um, that uh, there's a crack in the instrument cluster. This is a six inch crack on the speedometer glass that's in front of the driver. Which kind of threw me off because I you know, expected the mechanic to catch something like that. I wouldn't sell that car in that condition to anybody locally or to somebody who's 450 kilometers away. So I'm sure I'm gonna get an upset call. Jim, can I have you here a minute? Yes, sir. We've got a situation with Arnold going on. Are you aware of it? Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, Jim talked to you this morning or no? Oh, about the uh, cluster? Yeah. And there's other stuff in the past that he's made mistakes on, some critical safety issues regarding vehicles and customers driving vehicles. Going through kind of like a breakup with my ex and my head wasn't focused in that. I forgot to tighten something up. The customer drove it off and was really pissed off in that and they had to tow it back. Things don't stop. There's just constant, constant, constant stories that are going on. Um, cut or no cut?
You're lying to the guy. Go make up shit now. Make up clean. You got no choice. Fuck him. So my wife just got a call from this priest in Ottawa. And uh, he said, what kind of people work for you? I said, I'm not. She said, I don't know what he means. So I specifically he asked you if the car had alloy rims. The salesman, Hardy, um, was asked by the customer if, if the vehicle, the caravan, had alloy wheels. But I've had them. Yeah, it doesn't. It has half caps. Right. Did you review that car yourself? Yeah, I was, uh, saw the car when I was in the, in the lot. So you saw the car. Do you know the difference between an alloy rim and yeah, a plastic cup? Yeah, I looked at it. Do you, you know the difference? This is news to me. Crack speedometer glass. Did you see that? It was written in the thing, in the work order. Oh, no, no. It's not on the work order. By any mechanic or you or anyone else. Don't make up shit now. Make up clean. Yeah. Don't make up shit now. Right now, it's you're going to come clean. You know how upsetting it is to receive a phone call? Okay, it's a customer. It's different. This is your family priest. This is the guy who fucking blessed your kids. Right? And you're lying to the guy. No, I did not. It wasn't about lying. It's never intentional on your part. You're, that's why we call you slippery, right? I have, no idea, I have no idea because it's the easier thing to do. Because you probably never went out to the yard to look at it. I did. I did. I did. Then obviously you don't know the difference yard. between an alloy rim and a plastic hubcap. I, I did totally it was an alloy wheel. Get on the phone. Give him a call. I'll give him a call. In front of Jim. I need you to apologize like you've done to your father maybe. You know. So you've let me down on two counts as a salesman. You didn't review your delivery. You didn't describe the goods the guy is buying properly. Right? The service department let me down. The crack was there. My manager didn't check the car, even I asked him to check it. You know. It's tough to run a business when everybody doesn't do their part of the job. And it starts with you, because you're the you're you're the guy at the you know, in the front line. What's the difference between the alloy? What's an alloy? Describe me an alloy. I think it's just got the wrong. Uh, yeah, I thought it was an alloy. What's an alloy? What's an alloy? Alloy rims mean aluminum or polished aluminum wheels. This vehicle never had polished aluminum wheels. It had hubcaps. It has a steel rim with a hubcap. I'll call you now. Yeah. Shouldn't let him answer the question. I don't think he fucking knows. <laughs> Uh, it, but it's nice to give a bigger whack, you know, it's like uh, people with the fly swatter and the guy with the cannon. Right. So I'm sending the cannon shot right now. There goes Hardy again. Oh, fuck. Here comes the heat. Here comes the heat on Hardy, man. I don't know what the hell is going on. I think it's everybody in the world. It's just not only one person mistake. But it happened to... But mistake is a mistake, so I guess... We have to deal with it. I'm just going to call him later on and find out. I hope my priest doesn't curse me. You know, He's the one who's blessed all my three kids and uh, my new house and all that. So I, I hope he's not too upset with me. You know, Ar Arnold fixed a car where the speedometer glass was broken. There was a crack in it. Should he have picked it up? Yes, he should have picked it up. I will bring him in and, and talk to them and see that um, if they can come around or not, you know. Cut. Or no cut. It's, 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 it's Make it's a decision, John. We came to the conclusion where we're basically we're going to terminate him. There is no, you got no choice. We pulled him into our um, so-called boardroom. Like you looked at this car, you worked on it for I'm assuming five, six, eight hours on it. There's not even a notation on the work order. Would you buy a nine, ten thousand dollar car with a crack in a cluster? I will say no. No. So how do you expect me to explain to a customer who's 450 kilometers away that my mechanic overlooked it because he didn't think it was that serious? And it's not like half an inch. I'm talking it's the full length of the... Yeah. Consensus here was to let you go today. But I'm going to give you a written warning. 
Okay, Monday morning John will give you a letter outlining our concerns that your quality of work needs to improve. Okay, one more of this, we might wave goodbye and I hope it's not before Christmas. Would you expect any less if it's your family? Right? I can't afford to have a caliper bolt come off on a car. Neither can you, right? Nobody can. But it's really and, and you know what the sad part is? I asked him, can you go check the car for me? Strike four today? Yeah. No, no worry about it. I just I guess from now on I just any cluster, any scratch, anything on the car I'll repair. Some things you let go and some things you don't. But the problem was is that I, I had a big fuck up. I had a big fuck up. So for now, anything I do, any, whether it be a little thing or a big thing, will always be a big fuck up. A day in my life, uh, fires, 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 small fires, but you know, they have to get put out and I'm sure there's a few more coming. When he gets strict, he gets strict. I won't do it again. When he's come asking for a job. The language is the problem. I'm looking for a... Neil? Neil, yes. Neil? Okay, um, uh, office on office. your right? Okay, okay thank you. No problem. I came into the office an hour ago and I noticed an email. Hi. Hi. Neil. Yes. I'm Mark. We're big enough where people just drop in and ask, you know, if the owner's here. And he's come asking for a job. I'm looking for a job. Okay. Uh, actually, I send in to you my, my resume. Have, have a seat. Have Thank a seat. you. Yes. That's you. Yeah. And where are you from? Mexico. Do you have a driver's license? No. You don't have a driver's license? No. The language is, is, a, is a problem. Yes. You know, but the funny thing is, this reminds me from 32 years ago when I came to Canada, when I was 12, and I went door knocking looking for jobs. You know, I remember my parents doing this too. So I want to make sure if I hire you that you're going to succeed in the job. If you give me a, a chance, I'm really, I'm really appreciate and I'm, I'm, I promise work too hard. But if he's good on the phone and if he's confident the way I think he is, do you feel you can service your own community? You have, you're strong in your language that... Yes, yes I do. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Okay. We're going to hire you and take a chance and we hope that you can succeed in Canada. Perfect. So, uh, I got a job. You have a job. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm really impressed. <laughs> I'm really impressed. Thank you. It's a good feeling to, to give a hand, you know, to give somebody a hand up. And I hope you can succeed at it, you know. Oh, I, I'm expect to sell too, more, too many cars. That's why I, that's what I, I expect. I don't really like firing people. I hate that word. Neil's, Neil's not a bad guy in that, he just, you know, business is slowing down and when he gets strict, he gets strict. That's it. Distractions are something hopefully you don't bring into the workplace, but uh, unfortunately we're, we're human. They, you know, you, they happen, so you just try to avoid them, not let them get in and interfere with your day, but the stuff happens. So that's one great example that it took over me today and it's still kind of in the back of my head, so it's still there. It's a learning process for me, so if I make a mistake, that means it's probably I won't do it again. I won't do it again, I and mean, I try not to do it the same mistake. But it, things happen, so it's nothing personal. Everything is work. Everything is here, so every day is a, a fresh day, a new day. I live this business 24 hours a day. As I've said to jokingly to many customers, you know what, there's no blood inside, it's just cars and highways. Neil can only do what he does, like nobody else, but he has a fun 
way of doing it. He does it with a smile. We can fight, but we still end up laughing at each other at the end of the day. Get out of my house. See that? I've, I've done 50 things. I mean, I've imported stuff. Uh, I've, I've gone into different businesses to try and see that what I'm good at. In the end, I end up in the car business, and, and this is what I really, really love. It's, I get to meet new people every day. I get to make friends. But you know what? At the end of the day, everything's dealt with. Sam was here, I believe, for seven years. He's leading the sales chart. He's in the top. He's giving Hardy a run for his money this month. Of all places, why would you get a tattoo on your neck? Where's the receipt book? The guy wants to buy a car, but, you know, he's, he's putting up a lot of resistance. Yeah, he's just give me a small deposit. I don't know, maybe in 10, 15 minutes, we're going to leave. They're lowballing us big time. 